Hi, my name is David Deroff, and I'm a counselor for the Marriage Recovery Center. I run men's groups a lot for us, and uh, men often ask me in group sessions, why is it always about me? The question comes to me from men who are now in therapy and who are attempting to change their destructive behaviors in order to save their marriage. It often comes as an exasperation. Does she not have any responsibility? It's not all my fault. I keep trying and getting nowhere. Maybe after I do everything, she'll still leave me. To which I generally reply that you cannot only change her. You can only change you. You are called to love her and to give yourself and to make her better. If I look at the reasoning beneath this complaint, I believe that you'll see that what I really want is for my wife to be with me. I'm trying to be good. I need her to recognize that I'm working hard and I need a reward. I want you to listen to that. It's all about me. If I do good, I'm entitled to get a reward. That's at the core of narcissistic behavior. It's all about me. This is the wrong way to look at what we're doing and what to expect. Have you not heard of things like, you did the damage, you're going to have to own it? You break it, you bought it. When you play with fire, you'll get burned. If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. There are bound to be consequences. And we have to start owning what we have done. I heard of a teenager who started a wildfire. He was ordered to pay the consequence of the destructive behavior. And a fine was given to him at a jarring price of $36 million. The teen had said that he had tossed fireworks into the woods while hiking on Eagle Creek Trail in Oregon on September 2nd, 2017. And then it consequently burned up 48,000 acres. The teen's attorney called it absurd. Why is that absurd? Well, because the teen cannot possibly pay this amount. Is it possible that you're facing the same kind of thing? Your behaviors have been so destructive that you literally cannot pay the price. Maybe you're hoping for a legal caveat like the Eighth Amendment, which protects people from excessive fines and to cruel and unusual punishment. You're probably right. You can't pay the price for the emotional behavior and destruction that you've caused over the years. Viktor Frankl, an existentialist psychologist and survivor of the Holocaust, says, The one thing you can't take away from me is the way I choose to respond to what you do to me. The last one of freedoms is to choose one's attitude at any given circumstance. That's what I'm challenging you to do, is to choose how you will respond. Ephesians 5 gives us an answer on how to act and how to respond. It says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her to make her holy. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own body. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. Let me challenge you to be husbands who love your wife, transcending what is of benefit to you. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. When God says, husbands, love your wives, he speaks of a woman who is complex in her being. He calls us to love the whole wife, not just part of her. As every man loves his whole self, this means that the husband must do all he can to understand his wife's world. So, if you're completely loving her, you'll probably know that you need to change somehow. I've treated her badly. 
I need to at least start someplace to treat her well. How are we going to love unconditionally? And how are we going to love completely? Well, let me suggest that there's a number of areas that we need to consider. We need to love her heart. That's emotional love. I know of no woman who does not want to hear her husband speak loving words from his heart. Second, we need to love her mind, her intellect. Men often win their wife through thoughtful, engaging conversation, but too many men fail to take this habit into their marriage. Third, we love her body, physical love. In most basic level, physical love of a husband strives to meet his wife's basic needs. An able-bodied man who consistently chooses not to provide for the needs of his wife does not really love her. Physical love also needs to be complimentary. Your wife needn't be a supermodel to receive regular, sincere compliments. Physical love must be exclusive. Taking a second look at another woman or carrying on about her beauty is destructive. And it teaches us that each man must strive to please his own wife. Fourth, you need to love her soul. This is a spiritual love. Men tend to be task-oriented. We need to become comfortable with the phrase, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That was what Joshua said. Maybe you need to be the one who is going to church and leading your family to worship. That would be an expression of love. The fifth thing is you need to love her relationships. Children must not come before the marriage. You need to be swift to discipline them if they're disrespecting mom. Resist contradicting her in front of her children. Give her time off when it's necessary. Husbands need to protect their wife from her closest relatives as well, such as in-laws. You must take her side and be of one flesh. Outside of the home, allow her to develop friends. Have friends that encourage her. Number six, you need to love her humanity and be realistic. Attend, be tender to your wife's failures. She's not perfect. She needs to know that you love her. Even if you're saddened by something she's done, be grateful that she is different than you. A loving husband sees his wife as a gift from God, and even when she's not perfect, he honors her. Number seven, love her calling. That would be supportive. Romans 13 says, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. You can hardly help your wife love you if you aren't loving her yourself. Number eight, love her maker. Theological love. Ultimately, we are loveless because we love ourselves more than we love God. And we are dissatisfied with God's provision. This means that the more you love God, the better equipped you'll be to really love your wife. Galatians 2 says, Christ loves the whole Christian heart, mind, body, and soul, and every other part of us. So as we come to terms with what it means to really love, we'll be able to obey God's word. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. I hope I can encourage you to be one of those who truly loves his wife and so she can in turn brag on you. Thank you for listening.